Hey friends, it's Alex and today I have my slightly late, although not too late I don't think, <laughs> April book haul. So I acquired 19 books in April, which is more than I would have liked. I kind of just have this ongoing goal to read more books than I acquire per month. <laughs> and I constantly fail, it's really annoying. Um, but yeah, I acquired 19 books and I'll go through them now. Um, I've kind of got them in the order that I received them in but not really for any particular reason, that's just because that's how I stacked them up. Um, so the first book I got is Baker Thief by Claudie Arsenault. Oh dear, I think it's French. <laughs> Um, I got this one because I keep seeing it being recommended on lists of books about asexual people or books featuring asexual characters and I wanted to read it. So this book is about a girl called Adele and a girl called Claire. Adele is just trying to catch a thief who broke into her home and stole something. It says it, the thief stole her exocore, which I don't really know what that means. But I'll find out when I read it, I assume. Um, and then Claire is a baker. And she's also the one stealing the exocores. Oh, okay, it says that they are made of witches' souls. So I assume Claire is a witch and is wanting to like free these witches' souls from these exocores. It sounds like they're kind of imprisoned in there. So I'm very interested to read this. We'll see what I think of it and I'm looking forward to reading more books with asexual characters. Next up I got The Skyweaver by Kristen Cicerelli. <laughs> This is the third book in the Last Namsara series. I believe they're more companions. It does say on the back, Kristen Cicerelli's Iskari series comes to a captivating close with this final novel in the Last Namsara universe, which makes me think they're more like companion novels and follow different characters. But I read The Last Namsara quite a while ago now and I really, really loved it. It was so good, it was five stars. And then I've just not carried on with the series because I've been waiting to get them all in paperback because they keep releasing them in these weird tall paperbacks. So I'm very excited to finally have the whole series and now I can finally read it. And I think Beth and I are planning on buddy reading it, maybe. Um, but this series follows a world where there are dragons. And there's something about a Namsara but I can't really remember that much detail and I don't want to read the back of this one in case it spoils, which I don't think it will, but I'm just playing it safe. Next, I got two V.E. Schwab books. I got Bridge of Souls, which is the third book in the uh, Cassidy Blake series. I don't know what the series is called, but it follows Cassidy Blake and she can see ghosts and her parents have a TV show where they go and like explore haunted places and they can't see ghosts they just like going to different places around the world that are said to be haunted but then Cassidy can actually see the ghosts it just follows her and the places that she moves to with her family and the troubles they kind of well the troubles she gets into with being able to see ghosts and with the ghost like interacting with her. I've been listening to the series on audio and I've been really enjoying that so I'll probably listen to this one on audio too and I'll hopefully get to it soon. I've been really enjoying the series. It is a lot of fun. And then the other B.E. Schwab book I got is Vicious. I got this in hardcover. Can you tell? I don't know if you can tell it's in hardcover. I got this in hardcover. I already had it in paperback. I've had a bit of a saga with this book. I had it in the original paperback and then they changed the covers so I got it in the new paperback and then I decided that I wanted to collect as many of her books as possible in hardcover so now I've got this one 
in hardcover. <laughs> but V.E. Schwab's hardcovers are really pretty. They all have this like foil silhouette on them and I really like that and that's why I wanted to collect them all. And they're all this really cute little hardcover and I like them. I have read this book. I've not carried on with the series yet. I've not read Vengeful but I do obviously really want to. I really enjoyed this book when I read it. This is another book with an asexual character which is you know that's great and I really want to reread this one but I believe there's meant to be a third book in this series and so I'm probably going to wait until that comes out and then reread this one and then read Vengeful and then read the third book. Um, but this is about Victor and Eli who are roommates at college and they find a way to make like supernatural humans. <laughs> And so they do that and then it fast forwards 10 years and they're enemies. And yeah, it was good and I really want to reread it. Hopefully soon. The next six books I have <laughs> were, one. Well, I mean they're all books I wanted but they were 100% bought this month due to the shops reopening on the 12th of April which means that Waterstones was one of the shops that could reopen on the 12th of April and so I went book shopping after work and I bought six books because I hadn't been in a bookshop since December. Um, so <laughs> I couldn't control myself. Um, so the first one I got was Sanditon by Jane Austen. As far as I know this is just some of her like sh short stories and unfinished and unpublished novels I think. So it includes Le uh, <laughs> it just sounded like a lamb. It includes <laughs> Lady Susan, The Watsons, and Sanditon. I believe I already have Lady Susan in the Little Black Classics, but I didn't have Sanditon, and I don't know if I have The Watsons. Um, and this edition is just really cute, and I just wanted to own it because I own all of her other books, and it is one that I want to read one day. <laughs> So I thought I may as well get it while it was still in print. I also got Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. I've been really enjoying his books. I've actually only read two <laughs> and some of the short stories but I've been really enjoying them. I have a lot of them and I just need to carry on with reading them. I want to read them in order. <laughs> um, there's an order I found which is basically Elantris, uh, the Mistborn trilogy and then the Wax and Wayne trilogy or Miss Born Era 2 and then Warbreaker and then Stormlight Archive. Um, so I need to finish Miss Born both eras and then I can move on to Warbreaker. I'm really excited about this one because it's a standalone and Elantris was a standalone and Elantris is one of my favourite books ever. So I know that's like doesn't mean that I'm going to love this one as much as that one just because they're both standalones but I just kind of still think that anyway. Um, so I'm very excited to read this one. I've heard good things. Also the cover is really pretty and it's got like purple and I like purple. <laughs> um, and this is about two sisters and they're princesses. Um, one of them has to marry a god king and I think the one who has to marry the god king runs away or something. And um, I think the other sister was always deemed useless and now suddenly she's useful. I think, but that's not on the back so I may be wrong. I think that's just what I remember hearing from other people. And there's a magic system in this world called biochromatic magic which is based on an essence known as breath. And colour. Okay, um, but yeah, I just really love Brandon Sanderson's books and I'm really excited to give this one a try. I also picked up A Natural History of Dragons, a memoir by Lady Trent, and this is written by Marie Brennan. I love dragons. Um, so this is a fantasy series I've been eyeing up for quite a while. I have been kind of put off a little bit just because I don't really get on with non-fiction I find it really boring and so books that are fiction but written 
in a sort of non-fiction style kind of intimidate me a bit so I've been a bit anxious about picking this one up but I finally went ahead with it it does look really cool it kind of reminds me of those books that I can't remember like Dragonology or something that I read when I was a kid so I am quite interested and it follows Lady Trent who is the world's preeminent dragon naturalist and she brought the study of dragons into the clear light of modern science and this is basically just like a fictional memoir of her story I guess and I'm just really interested to give it a go because dragons <laughs> what other reason do I need <laughs> I also picked up the Gilded Ones by Namina Fauna I'm really happy I picked this one up because I've been in Waterstones since and they don't have this like really shiny edition anymore like it's basically the same but without the foiling on the cover and this one's got really nice suede edges and it's really pretty um there's actually not much on the back so I don't really know what this is about but it says are we girls or are we demons are we going to die or are we going to survive in this bold and immersive fantasy a young heroine fights to save a world that would dare tame her and discovers she is her own fiercest weapon um, and this has just been a really hyped YA fantasy. I'm really excited to give it a go. Outcasts by blood, warriors by choice. Um, I'm really excited to give it a go. Um, I don't know when I'll get to this because I do tend to like the marathon series so I might not end up getting to this for like three years. But I'm really happy I have this beautiful copy and I can't wait until I can get to it. Hopefully the whole series comes out quickly. Or maybe I'll just read it anyway. <laughs> I also picked up my like eighth or ninth copy of one of my favourite books ever because I saw this edition and it was just really pretty and I couldn't resist and that's The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. I just really love this edition, it's so beautiful and I'd never seen it before. It's by Virago Modern Classics. I just think it's beautiful, I wanted to own it. It's also got this bookmark I got in it. I don't know if you can see that very well but it's like an A and it's pretty but yeah I just wanted to own this really pretty edition I own too many editions already and that will never stop me from buying more <laughs> and then the last book I picked up um I think it was the Gilded Ones was on buy one get one half price and so I needed to find another one that was on buy one get one half price because I can't just ignore that sticker <laughs> Um, so I got The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. I have been wanting to read this one for a while and I've been waiting for the paperback and I saw that it was out so I grabbed it. And I believe this is, well, Matt Haig writes a lot of books that deal with mental health and he's written some non-fiction books that deal with his struggles with mental health so his books, I've never read one of his books but I imagine they can be pretty impactful which I do really enjoy in my contemporary fiction. Um, but this follows Nora and at the stroke of midnight on her last day on earth she finds herself transported to a library there she is given the chance to undo her regrets and try out each of the other lives she might have lived which raises the ultimate question with infinite choices what is the best way to live so it just sounds really interesting i've heard really good things um i've heard really good things about matt haig in general so i'm definitely very excited to give this one a try also, I don't know if it is a book about books, but it says a library in the title. I, I'm kind of picturing it as like a book. Like it, She gets transported to this library and then there are books on the shelves, but each book is like actually a portal to an alternate universe or something. That's how I'm picturing it. So in my head, it's sort of a book about books, but not quite. But we'll see what it actually is when I read it. So that was my, oh my God, yay, the bookshops are open again, shopping spree. Um, and then I still got more books after that, which is just not great, but oh well. <laughs> I had a couple of pre-orders come in. So I had Reaper of Souls by Rena Barron come in. This is the sequel to Kingdom of Souls. And I can't remember what that one's about and I don't want to spoil myself with this one. But once again, it's another series. I'm waiting for the whole series to be out before I read it. And I thought it was a duology and I was really excited to be able to read it and now it's, I found out it's a trilogy so I'm not going to be able to read this one anytime soon but I'm very excited to give this one a try and I just have wanted to make sure I got the hardback because I have the first one in hardback and for some reason this one took ages to arrive like it came out 
and I had it pre-ordered since last year I think and then it came out and then it arrived a month later so oh well it's here now so I have it so I can relax <laughs> um I also got my pre-order of Dragon Legend by Katie and Kevin Tsang and this is a sequel to Dragon Mountain and once again I don't know what that book's about because it's over there somewhere but it's like about dragons I would assume um, but I have read Katie, I've read her other book, I've read um, her book, oh my god, words. I've read Katie's book, Wing Jones, which she published under the name Catherine Weber. Um, and I did really enjoy that. And like I say, I love dragons. And I like Katie's books. So I'm very excited to give this one a try. Also, I believe Katie and Kevin are like married or together which is just always very cute. <laughs> then I have a book that was sent to me for review by Harper360, so thank you very much to them. And that is Last Chance Books by Kelsey Rodkey. This is a book about books, which I love. And it follows Madeline Moore, who wants to take over her family's independent bookstore after she finishes college. And then one day across the road from them a chain bookstore opens and it threatens to shut down her family's independent bookstore and so she's just fighting she's just fighting to try and keep her bookstore open and it sounds cute i believe it's also a romance with these two people i would assume and it sounds cute and i'm looking forward to reading it it does actually say on the back that it's a rom-com so it is a romance um so yes thank you very much to Harper360 for sending me this one. I will be posting a review as soon as I read it. It comes out on the 18th of May so I will hopefully get to this one soon and the review will be up on my blog which is always linked in the description if you want to check that out. Then we have another collection of books that I just went on a little spree in Waterstones for and this one was for a different reason and that was because I was just having a bit of a Tolkien day I was like at work listening to Tolkien music while I was working and it just got me in a very tolkien -y mood and I decided after work that I was going to go to Waterstones and actually buy some of the Tolkien books I've been meaning to buy for ages and just keep not getting around to. So I picked up three. I picked up The Fall of Arthur, the story of Kulervo? Kulervo? <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce that. And then, oh dear, okay. And then we have the Lay of Outro and Itrune. <laughs> I can't pronounce these words. Um, so this one, The Fall of Arthur, I believe is definitely not set in the Middle Earth world. This is, um, I think it's just him, kind of his version of the legends of King Arthur. And I'm just interested to give it a try because I don't really know much about the legend apart from like the Merlin TV show. Um, and I just love Tolkien and his writing. So I'm very keen to give this one a try. It may not happen for a very long time, but I don't think I'm ever going to grow out of my love for Tolkien, so that's fine. And then with these two, I'm not, I can't really tell if they're set in Middle Earth or not. I'm struggling to get a sense of that. Okay, this one actually on the back says that this early but seminal work is an important addition to the non-Middle Earth, non-Middle Earth portion of his canon alongside Tolkien's other retellings of myths and legends. The legend of Sigurd and Gudrun, the fall of Arthur, and then the story of Kulervo. So I guess they're not part of the Middle Earth canon either. But once again, I'm just very excited to read them and just, I just want to read all of Tolkien's works and these are two of them. So I picked them up, finally. So I'm onto the last three books and these are subscription box books. So I get Fairy Loot, Illumicrate, and then I also get the Goldsboro Sci-Fi and Fantasy Fellowship <laughs> book monthly. 
So these are those books. I don't actually think they're all April's books because things have been delayed for like a year now. It, everything's just been a bit odd for since Covid hit really. Um, so I think the... Do you know what? I lied. These are actually two Fairy Newt books and the Goldsboro book. There's no Illumicrate book here. I haven't had my Illumicrate April book yet. Um, so yeah, two <laughs> Fairy Newt books and a Goldsboro book. So the Goldsboro book is Sister Song by Lucy Holland. This is a very beautiful edition. They always do very beautiful editions. It's got amazing sprayed edges, just solid on the bottom and top, but on the side it's beautiful and it like matches the cover. I'm very much a fan of this series. I mean, this book, oh my God. I'm very much a fan of the design of this book. Um, I don't actually know much of what it's about. I believe it is a historical fantasy which I'm not usually the biggest fan of, but actually reading it, it sounds like it's a really, really historical fantasy, which I might be more into. I like high fantasy set in like medieval inspired worlds. So a historical fantasy set in our world, but in the more medieval times, I feel like I could probably get on with too. I don't know if medieval was the right word, but I just mean like, I like my fantasy books to not have like guns or trains or anything like that, just like, they ride horses or they have a horse drawn carriage but then it's also not in like a built up city with like society and like all the 1800s stuff like maybe a historical fantasy set in like the 1400s would be okay for me i don't know how to explain what i mean <laughs> but this one does seem like it's not set in like 18th century london or something so i might be do i mean I mean 1800s London, not 18th century London. I don't know words, I don't know words. Um, but I feel like looking at the synopsis, I might get on with this one a little bit more than I thought I would. But it says, King Cador's children inherit a land, land abandoned by the Romans, torn by warring tribes. Reva can cure others, but can't heal her own scars. Cain? battles to be seen as the king's son although born a daughter oh okay i didn't know that oh okay i'm like way more excited to read this book now oh my god and sin i can't pronounce any of the names dreams of love longing for adventure all three fear a life of my camera just cut off and i have no idea where i was up to um but I'll leave the links to all these books down below. So if it cut off in the middle of me reading the synopsis, it'll, the link will be in the description. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is the first time this ever happened to me. Um, but yes, I'm now much more excited to read this book now that I've actually read the synopsis. But I'm one of those people, if I subscribe to a subscription box, I will read every book that comes. Even with this one, you know what's coming before it comes. It's not like a surprise one. I will still get it and read it because I'm like I can use it as a way to read books I might not have otherwise read and kind of broaden my horizons so I would have read this anyway but I'm now much more excited to <laughs> and then the last two books in my April book haul are two books from Fairy Loot so I believe it's the March and April books <laughs> from Fairy Loot the March Fairy Loot book was The Bright and the Pale by Jessica Rubinkowski um, so uh, as far as I know this is a polar fantasy and it follows a girl who escaped from a village that was like trapped under ice and then one day she has to go back there for some kind of expedition, I don't really know. Um, but I've just looked at the cover and it's got a village under ice and all the houses are just under ice and it just kind of made me think of Pompeii. <laughs> So that's interesting and I don't know if that was intentional. But yeah, I'll give this one a try. I think it's a duology, so I don't know if I'll read this right way. I'm not, like I may end up reading this right away because I'm not as fussed about waiting for the second book for this one. So maybe I'll read this one soon and we'll see what I think. And then the April Fairy Loot book was The Prison Healer by Lynette Noni and I'm very excited about this one. I love the purple. I don't think the original cover is purple. 
but I do really like the purple. And also Lynette Noni is Australian and I'm Australian and I love supporting Australian authors and I'm very happy that she's got like some kind of more international regard. I don't know if that's the right word, you know what I mean. Um, and as far as I know this follows a girl who is in a prison and she works as the prison healer and then one day um, a queen, I think? The rebel queen is sent to the prison and they have to try and escape together. And I'm very intrigued about this. Oh, and that was the other thing as well, it features a plague, <laughs> which is like a bit weird for right now. Um, but it's not necessarily something that bothers me. I don't, well, I've not actually read a plague book since COVID started, but I don't think it'd be something that bothers me. So I'm still willing to give this one a try, but once again, I may end up waiting until more books in the series are out anyway. So that was my April book haul, um, I hope you enjoyed, let me know if you've read any of these books or if you want to read any of these books, let's just chat about these books in the comments. Um, and if there are any you think I should get to sooner rather than later, let me know because I, there is a very good chance I won't get to any of these books until next year because <laughs> I have so many hundred books. Um, so yeah, let me know if there are any think I should prioritise. Hopefully my May book haul will be a lot smaller because I want to try and reduce the amount of unread books I own because it's currently an entire Billy bookshelf double stacked and it's ridiculous. So I'm trying to reduce that. So hopefully next month I'll do a bit better. Hopefully ne uh, hopefully in May I won't like go on a big waterstone spree because they'll have just opened because in May they'll have been open for a while now. That was a really weird sentence. I'm so sorry. <sighs> Um, but yes, thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!